Last week, we talked a lot about some of the lies that Gravano has told. And one of the things that we did talk about was the fact that Gravano was very much involved in the narcotics trade. We talked about the shipping vessel uh, where it was publicly noted by multiple informants, Al Diarco, the Conti letter, that Gravano actually was involved in that shipment of cocaine. He was involved in narcotics operations, and that's a problem. And it's a problem because Gravano consistently testified under oath that he was never involved in drugs, would have nothing involved with drugs ever. But the fact is, is that uh, he was. And so it, it's more hypocrisy and more lies. Now, one of the things I want you guys to all understand, this is going to be a little back and forth today because we're going to cover a bunch of different things. And I'm going to leave a couple of things out that I want to include in the documentary that are very explosive. But one of the things I want you guys to pay attention to, especially when I get uh, into sort of who Salvatore Gravano is. If you have watched any of his podcasts, he seems to have a memory like nobody's business. He remembers everything, right? He remembers every detail, remembers every facet of every crime. If you watch any of his podcasts, uh, you know that he can recall details of cock pumps. That's one of the things he likes to recall, but he recalls colors, details, clothing. He remembers all of this. But when he was under cross-examination, he suddenly had fucking amnesia. And this is not about portraying John Gotti on, in any form or fashion as an innocent victim. But I stand where I stand with this, is that I've always said, if, if the government can impugn your character by bringing up things that you were acquitted of, then we should be able to bring up everything Sam you lied about. Because you should be convicted, not on the merit or the words of other people, but by the evidence. And there's a lot of suggestions that Gleason, who was the prosecutor at the time, knew Gravano had committed other murders. He knew Gravano had lied. He sat and withheld evidence about the drug connection. And they did that because they knew it would cause a problem with the jury. So I'm going to read portions of, of some things today. Uh, and this is what the judge said. It was interesting to note that a part of the agreement, the government agreed not to prosecute DeSantis. Now, DeSantis is someone who told the government that Gravano was involved in drugs. Uh, but the government agreed not to prosecute DeSantis for his participation with Anthony Castle and others in a 1989-1991 shipment of cocaine. They don't prosecute him. Why is that? They know he was involved with uh, Casso and Gravano with the cocaine deal. Why do they not prosecute him? Uh the statement goes on, given the close relationship that existed between the Gambino and Lucchese organized crime families during that period, it defies credulity to believe that there was information linking Gravano to the Hunter conspiracy and that it would not have been made known to the defendant sooner than the day preceding the expiration of the time in which the motion was filed. So in other words, they're saying is they don't believe it. That if the government had it, they would have given it over. But we've already proven to you from last week with what Gleason did. The Conti letter, Al Diarco's direct testimony, which really didn't start until 92, which was after all of these trials, that they knew about it. But they didn't bother to do anything. Because if they brought it up then, there would have been a delay. The defendants would have gotten uh, Giglio materials and they would have proven that Gravano was a drug dealer, which went against everything that he would testify to. Uh, and so I'm going to read some, unfortunately, very unflattering things about John Gotti. I'm going to be honest with you, but it, it's all to prove that everybody knew gas pipe was a drug dealer, even Gravano, because Gravano under testimony has said he didn't know that Casso was a drug dealer, but I have wiretaps that are going to prove other John Gotti. Uh, they can pick one out with the uh, gas pipes boat got caught in Howard beach in Freeport. Uh, 50,000, 50,000 bales, 50,000 pounds, 50,000 tons. Didn't that happen one time? Sammy Gravano. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, Gotti, I mean, I'm not aware. Gravano. Yeah, probably. Gotti. Uh, this is what I understand. They got one tape with that uh, see them fucking guys. That was half hours. What do you mean half hours? Well, gas pipe called me this morning. Gas called me up this morning. That's half ours, half theirs. It's half the guy up on the fucking block. 50,000 pounds, he partners this. So it shows that Gotti knew that drugs were being moved by Casso. It shows complicity that Gravano knew. Uh, 
And so there's there's more I want to read. And and this was a motion that was put forward by Richard uh, Raybach. Uh, his affidavit recounts a meeting he and a private investigator had with Pete Calfano, the hunter who was the hunter captain of the boat uh, in the federal prison in which Califano is currently incarcerated. Reebok relates that Califano told him that his direct liaison to the cocaine conspiracy was a person named Tommy Carew, a.k.a. Tommy Irish, and that Tommy Irish informed Califano that the cocaine was for Anthony Casso and Salvatore Gravano. Reebok's affidavit goes on to state that while his case was pending, Califano learned that Gravano's cooperation with the government and that the government never sought to learn from him who was to deliver the drugs. So in other words, they went after Reebok, uh, Rabick. They went after fucking uh, Peter Califano and they had direct information. Now, anytime you look at a DEA case, okay, and they arrest you for drugs, they want to know who who's involved. They want to know everybody that's involved. But you mean to tell me out of a historical reference of what the DEA and the FBI does, we want to know everybody who's involved. All of a sudden, Sammy Gravano signs a cooperation agreement and the feds aren't interested in this case anymore. They don't want to hear the Gravano. They didn't even bother, even though they had DEA reports, they had confidential sources that told them Gravano was involved. The FBI never questions it. They never go to see these guys in prison and say, okay, here's the deal. We have DEA reports. We have all of this stuff going on. What is your account of what happened? They never even fucking bothered. Reebok concluded by stating that Califano informed him that Tommy Irish is completely familiar with the participation of Gas Pipe Casso and Salvatore Gravano in the Hunter Affair and that he and Califano is responsible for further discussion of the matter. They never, ever questioned them. So if everybody's screaming Gravano was involved with Casso and they're going to go after Casso eventually, why not, why not ask the question? It's just a little bit strange. It's just a little bit strange. There were DEA reports. There were photos. There was all kinds of things that tied Gravano directly to that case. But once again, the government sat on it. Gleason had those affidavits and he didn't bother moving on them until after John Gotti was convicted. And there's a reason for that. And there's a reason for that. Uh, Let's see. So there were also several murders, okay, that Gravano was convicted of and conspiracy of. Uh, What I'm going to do is read you the list of the people that Gravano was convicted of murdering. Okay, Louis de Bono, Eddie Garofalo, Tommy Spinelli, uh, Wilfred Johnson, uh, Francesco Oliveri. Remember that name because that's going to come up again. Okay, uh, Laborio Molito, Robert Di Bernardo, uh, Mike, Mikey DeBat, uh, Nicky Maramondo, Paul Castellano, Tommy Bellotti, John Santiago, Jackie. Remember when I told you he murdered a kid named Jackie who was homosexual? Remember when I told you that? He was charged with that murder, so he can't deny he didn't do it. Okay, Frank Fiala, uh, Frank Skilitano, John Simone, Nicky Scabetta. Alan Kaiser, Joseph Colucci. Now, let me make a point about Alan Kaiser really quick. Originally, when this murder list, this hit list came out, Alan Kaiser was not provided in that list. It was a a John Doe. And the reason why that happened was because the FBI did not want to release to the public that he had killed a child, a 16-year-old. And they didn't because they didn't want that coming up at trial. Because if you tell a jury that he killed a child, it's lights out. They're not going to believe anything he has to say. So for 10 fucking years, he was just John Doe. That's the respect the FBI gave to the Kaiser family. He's just a John Doe. And it wasn't until 30 years later, really, that that information even came out. And then you look at everybody that covers Gravano and all of this fucking nonsense. They never mention Alan Kaiser. Nobody ever does. They'll put the NBC, ABC will put him on TV and never question him about the murder of a child. But it wasn't until uh, Angel Gotti, myself, Joy Farachi started hammering Gravano that he felt that he needed to address it. And rather than address it like a man, he blamed it on somebody else, said the kid was a junkie. He ran towards the car. What are you going to do? Well, why is a 16 year old without a weapon something you fear when you have a sawed off shotgun? And that's not even how that murder was committed. Gravano conveniently remembers what he wants. 
They weren't parked on the side of the road and there was an issue and the kid came running towards the car. No, what happened was they were driving down the street and they pulled over next to him, coaxed him to the car and Sammy Gravano sat up and blew his fucking head off. That's the way that murder went down. Not the way Sammy says it did. Because at the time, Sammy Gravano had a broken foot. So he couldn't walk. So he lurched down on the fucking seat. And as soon as Alan Kaiser came next to the car, they blew his fucking head off. And a mistaken identity. That's the lie that he perpetuates. And Gravano always talks about all of these murders he committed. But you're going to find out today that maybe he didn't. I personally believe he had multiple murders. I'm not going to tell you he didn't. But did you know he only admitted to pulling the trigger once to the FBI? Only once. And if that's the truth, which I don't believe it to be because he killed Alan Kaiser, which he blamed on Louis Melito, who was dead, very convenient. But if we are to believe, like the FBI says, he only committed one murder on his own, then he's got the same number John A. Light and some of these other rats have. He's not the prolific killer he wants you to think he is. But do I believe it's more than one? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the government allowed him to only admit to one murder he took care of himself? Are you fucking out of your mind? So there's a murder. There is the Cass murder. Gravano murdered Jules Cass on September 22nd of 1972 when Jules Cass resisted Gravano's attempt to rob him. On January 29th of 1996, Attorney Gleason states that until recently, I wasn't aware of that murder myself. The government reported that it had allegedly interviewed Gravano concerning this allegation and he denied any involvement or knowledge of the event. So right there in 96, they knew that Gravano was accused of that murder. They say they questioned him, but yet they really didn't. The O'Malley, the Maui murder. There was another murder in which Gravano was involved but did not reveal. In 1975 and 1976, Gravano hired Steve Goodman to force Donald O'Malley to sign a document releasing, excuse me, relinquishing half of his legitimate businesses to friends of Gravano and Gravano himself. And that Maui died as a result of a beating which would which was administered to Goodman, who was then sent a signed document stained in O'Malley's blood to Gravano. So here's another murder that Gravano was never, ever convicted of. But he ordered. All right, moving on. Uh, there were more affidavits of Gleason. Uh, and others. The Gleason affidavit relates that early on in the debriefing, Sammy Gravano said he informed the government of a murder about what he what he expected to be cross-examined about. And the circumstances surrounding the murder were as follows. In the 1970s, an associate of another crime family who was a friend of Gambino, or excuse me, Gravano, wanted to keep a greater portion of the proceeds of an extortion than his bosses would allow. He requested and received Gravano's permission to say that Gravano was sharing the extortion proceeds on the behalf that he would thus be permitted to keep a larger portion. Gravano says that he learned later on that the victim received a beating related to that extortion. To protect the associate from the consequence of murder within organized crime circles, um, Gravano gave him permission to falsely tell others that the extortion of the victim and the beating from which he had died was on the orders of Gravano. But at the time, Gravano didn't mention the name Donald O'Malley. So what you have is Gravano telling the government ahead of time, so listen, they're probably going to blame me for this murder of this guy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I had nothing to do with it, but I ordered it. Or I, or he says, I had nothing to do with it. It was other people. I only learned about it after the fact. But once again, there's another murder that Gravano ordered. And if did you hear what I said earlier? I'll reread it because this is very important. This is going to be a point I'm going to make. Let me go back up. Uh, Gravano hired Steve Goodman to force Donald O'Malley to sign a document 
that would relinquish half of his businesses. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? That has been Sammy Gravano's MO from one day, from day one. I want what you have. You don't give it to me. I'm going to fucking kill you. It's unreal. In short, Gravano told Gleason in uh, initial briefings that before the trial of this case, that he believed he might be eventually accused of the murder and cross-examination because people might believe he authorized it. However, according to Gleason, he did not authorize it and had no criminal responsibility. Therefore, Gleason concluded that there was no obligation to disclose those facts to defendants. Did you, let me read it again. Gleason, it, Gleason felt, or excuse me, I read that wrong. Gravano said he had not authorized it and that he had no criminal responsibility for it. Therefore, Gleason concludes, these are his words. I concluded, but there, there was, I concluded there was no obligation to disclose those facts to anyone. Why not? It's a fucking murder. If he's bringing up a murder that's unsolved, you have a, a, a judicial responsibility to investigate that you have a responsibility to call in the feds to discuss that with them especially if you're worried that it's going to come up on cross-examination they have an obligation to bring that up because that is information that can impugn their character witness and they don't do it are you starting to see a fucking trend so these are all of the things that gravano was guilty of okay perjury as far as narcotics false trial testimony that he said he had an opposition to in drug to drugs and drug dealing when in fact he was doing that he said under oath he had not been personally involved in drug dealing he told the government during debriefings that that he that he admitted to all the crimes that he has ever committed and we're going to find out on cross-examination that he's a fucking liar he also said that he had only personally committed one murder where he was the shooter. Do any of you fucking believe that? That he only killed one part? We know he killed Jules. We know he killed Louis Melito. That's two. He only admitted to committing one murder on his own. The government believed that. Do any of you fucking believe that? Because I sure fucking don't. He told the jury under oath that no one had ever been injured in the course of any armed robbery, which he was a participant, and that was a lie. Do I need to keep going? So what we have is this. You want to talk perjury. When he testified that he admitted to the prosecution of all the murders he ever committed. He, con he concealed the murders of Pete Inzarello, Eddie Wino, and a guy named Harold, whose last name was unknown, and who was also Nicky Carrazzo's son-in-law. These are things, these are murders Gravano committed. Yes, Eddie Wino, everybody blames other people for that one. Gravano committed those murders. But yet, he didn't admit to any of those. But these are murders he committed. Then there was information that came from several inmates in federal prison who told New Jersey State Police that Gravano was involved in those murders. Multiple people came forward and said that Gravano was involved in the murders of Harold, Peter Inzarello, excuse me, Peter Inzarello, and Eddie Lino, and Harold. Why doesn't the government ask them questions? This information, Al Diarco said certain things. All of these people, you have 40, 50 people saying the same thing, coming out and saying, no, 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 that's not right. And granted, you can make the argument, oh, they were trying to help Gotti, maybe they lied. Okay, I get it. You might get three or four that'll do that, but not 40 or 50. When all of these people, the, the Patsy Conti letter, Reebok, all of these things that came forward, government just put under the fucking rug and didn't want to deal with them 
the government failed to disclose Gravano's perjury concerning his alleged involvement in narcotics trafficking. We've already talked about it. Now I want to move on to something else. And I could have covered more there, but I want to move on to something else. Remember how I told you guys that Gravano's a lying sack of shit and he murdered people. He murdered people for their businesses. I'm going to go direct from, from transcripts. John Gotti. It's a big building. I don't know where. Six, six million, 20 million, whatever the fuck it is. But from what, from what, where are we going here, Frankie? Frankie, where the hell did these news comp, would new companies come from? Where did these five news com, comp, when did these five new companies come from? Uh, I mean, when, 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 when Nazabeek died, you were nothing. Louie had Gem Steel. You told me that the guy talked behind my back. Now you got Gem Steel. The other thing, you told me, DB cried behind my back. Now you got all of his businesses. Uh, you got Bobby Sasso. Right there, he's talking about Salvatore Gravano. This is what pissed Gravano off. What Gotti is, is bellyaching to Frankie Locasio about is, you know what, Gravano comes in. And he tells me, DB's talking shit behind my back. He's talking subversive. He's saying nasty things about me. Uh, tell him I want to see him, which Gravano never does. And so when DB never shows up, what does Gotti do as a result? Kill him. He took Sammy Gravano's word. He's talking about Louie, Gem Steel. Louie owned a big business, Gem Steel, huge multi-million dollar company. Gravano kills him and takes the fucking business. And Gotti's like complaining about it, saying, look, He's drawing a line with Frankie saying something doesn't add up. It's amazing. He's got all these new companies after he kills people. We're going to move further on. And this is proof. Gotti's talking to Frank Lucasio. Yeah, but where, uh, let me tell you, uh, Frankie, there's, there's creating and then there's creating. Now look, Frankie, you want to put your head, head with fucking Sammy? You're too bright for that. DB. Did he ever talk subversive about me to you? Locasio, never. Gotti, never talked it to Angelo. He never talked to Joe Piney. I took Sammy's word that he talked behind my back. Louie, did he ever say anything to any of you guys about me? Locasio, never. Gotti, I took Sammy's word, Louis de Bono. And I sat with this guy. I saw the papers and everything. He didn't rob nothing. You know why he's dying? He's going to die because he refused to come in when I called. He didn't do nothing else wrong. Because what Gravano had told Gotti is that Louis de Bono was stealing money from them. He was stealing money from them. And Gravano also told Gotti he was talking subversive behind everybody's back. And he's realizing right now, and it's too late because he's being recorded, he's realizing Gravano has lied to him about everything. That's huge. And I'm not justifying what Gotti did as a result. But when you're told certain things from a guy who's allegedly a higher up, he's talking shit about you. He's robbing you. He's not telling you what he's making. All lies. Gotti checked. He checked with everybody. And the paperwork came back that Louis de Bono wasn't doing shit to Gotti. And this is Gotti lamenting that he made a huge mistake believing Gravano. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that is the biggest proof that Gravano's a lying sack of shit right there. And it's, it, it, it's Gotti realizing too late. That's not Gotti talking shit about Gravano. That's Gotti being open about the problem. And yeah, people are going to twist that and say, well, if he hadn't have said anything, where did he mention Gravano's name? Did he ever say Sammy's name once in any of that? Not once. Salvi, Salvatore Gravano perjured himself at trial. The government knew, and they permitted him to do so. The government's misconduct was compounded by the frequent refer references to Gravano's cooperation agreement, which he was obligated legally to tell the truth as a significant factor to be considered by the jury in assessing his credibility. So the question is, did Gravano breach his duty to fully disclose his past crimes? That's, that's, a, that's an important question. Gravano in court agreed to tell the truth and detail all of his criminal past. 
But as we're going to see through this cross-examination, he's not really being truthful. Question, and this is from uh, defense attorneys. Now, is it your testimony, is it, that in your FBI debriefings, you told the prosecution about every single criminal act you ever committed? Gravano, I believe I did. Defense attorneys, you did? Gravano, maybe not in detail, but I believe I did. Question from the defense. Are you telling us that you detailed all of your crimes? Gravano, no, I didn't detail them all. Let's stop right there. That is what he's supposed to do. He is supposed to reveal everything. He's admitting under oath that he didn't. He withheld. Question from the defense. You made a list of all the crimes that you could remember, in effect, orally in writing, in those couple of days? Gravano, yes. Question from the defense. All right, and you left nothing out. Gravano, to the best of my recollection. Let me move on a little bit. Next question from the defense. And if it comes to pass, you remember a crime. If you remember a crime that you forgot about, you would tell them about it, right? Gravano, yes. Defense attorneys, when you remember a crime that you had forgotten, you tell them about it. You expect not to be prosecuted for the disclosure of their criminal act, regardless of when you disclosed it, right? This answer is fantastic. I would imagine if I left out a detail in good faith, that there's a possibility that probably nothing would happen from it. So he already knows that no matter what he can do, he, he can disclose whatever the fuck he wants. They're not going to do anything to him. Defense attorney question. When Mr. Gleason was asking you questions concerning whether the government knew of these various murders, you were responding that you told them and you pled guilty in order to get them sort of behind you, right? Well, not really. That's his answer. Question, why did it again was back to the agreement with the government? I was supposed to be debriefed to tell the truth, not withhold everything. Okay, so that's Cravano saying, further explaining it. Why he did it again was back to the agreement that I had with the government. I was supposed to be debriefed, tell the truth, not withhold anything. It wouldn't be in my best interest to hide something from the government at any point. Once I went into the arrangement to tell the truth, that would be my purpose. What would be my purpose to hide something? It would only come back to haunt me. Well, and it's about to. Question from the defense. When you were questioned by Albert Krieger, and as you've just seen, you told him, did you not? And you said it was true that after you had signed the first agreement on November 13th, and in between that period of December 5th, and at the time when you know everything is covered as of December 5th, you told the government you disclosed crimes to them during that period of time for the first time. So in other words, things they didn't know about before November 13th, things that are covered by the December 5th agreement, but things that you had not disclosed before November 13th. Is that true? Gravano, I don't really know. Defense, you don't know. Gravano, I don't know the answer to that question. Cover, or excuse me, defense. Well, either you sit here today and you have a recollection as you sit here today consistent with what you testified to on March 6th of 1992 that there were crimes which you had not yet disclosed to the prosecution as of the date you signed the plea agreement on November 13th. Either that's correct or it's not correct. Answer, I was continuously being debriefed and we were plugging my lifestyle as I recalled it and I told the truth at that time. And I go on, I'm, I'm not too sure of the dates. I'm not sure of what covers what, but that's what I did with my plea agreement and that's what I continuously do. Question from the defense. I'm not even questioning you about what covers what. So we understand again each other. As far as in your mind, you're concerned as of December 5th of 1991 in this court, when you pled guilty to all of that information, anything you told the government up to that point was covered by the agreement. We understand that, or you understand that. Rather, Gravano, I believe at the time I have told them everything. Yes, everything to my knowledge from my memory. It's going to get better, guys. We move on to more testimony. 
At the time you testified about the, uh, this is, this is what's big at the time that you testified. Keep in mind, this is after this is like in 92. Okay. This is very important because it's going to conflict with a report that I have from 91. Okay. At the time you testified about the Oliveri murder at the Gotti trial, this is after the Gotti trial. Did you recall that Ozzy Stantini was involved in the murder? Gravano says, no question. Could you explain to the jury how you recall today that Ozzy was involved in the Oliveri murder? Answer, please focus on what I'm saying. People, uh, his answer is, well, I debriefed about it. It was one of the homicides that we touched on. As I spoke about the hit, I completely left out Ozzy. I forgot that Ozzy was involved. I forgot to mention it. Sometime later after trial, I received a phone call from an FBI agent by the name of Tom Petruski, and he asked if Ozzy Stantini knew about the Oliveri hit, and I told him I would get back to him and hung up. Then I re- immediately, uh, I immediately remembered at that point that not only he knew, but he was involved in it, and that I forgot to say it when I was debriefed by the FBI. You're, you're, <laughs> like, do you guys just hear that? He's lying. How do you, you know nothing about the hit when a guy called, you could call me on the phone right now, and you could say, hey, do you know about this murder? No, I, I don't really know nothing about it. Then I get off to the phone, and suddenly I do remember, this is a guy who, if you listen to his podcast, remembers details of cock pumps but he doesn't reveal or remember details of of a mob murder? Are you fucking kidding me? It's just more lies. Question from from the defense. So what did you do? Gravano says, the next day I thought about it for a little while. The next day I called the U.S. attorney, John Gleason, and I told him what had happened. He told me that he would send down a team of people, agents or whatever, to come down and talk to me and find out what happened. So once again... Here's another question. So now between the time you spoke to Agent Petruski and the time you called Mr. Gleason, what were you thinking about? Answer, what was I thinking about? I thought how serious it was. It would be, it would be a, it would be to forget a situation like that. I was worried about how the government would react to it. Why would you worry about it if you had nothing to do with it? So here's something from the Federal Bureau of Investigation Marked 11-20-1991. On November 14th of 1991, cooperating witness, who is, we know, Sammy Gravano, advised that approximately two or three years ago, a man was killed by members of the Gambino crime family in Astoria area of Queens in retaliation for the murder of this man uh, and his sons of another male, first name redacted, uh, blah, blah, blah. Subsequent investigation has detailed that the individual who was killed was Francesco Oliveri and will hereafter be referred to as such. Please pay attention to this. Uh, confidential informant Gravano advised that the contract to kill Oliveri was given to John Gambino. Oliveri was known to live in an apartment house in Astoria. On the day of the murder, committed early in the morning, Gravano, who was then consigliere of the Gambino crime family, rode in the car with Lorenzo Menino, who was a not a made member of the Gambino crime family, uh, while Robert uh, Bisacchia, a.k.a. Cabert, and Joey Gambino, a.k.a. Giuseppe Gambino, who was John Gambino's brother, drove in another car. Arriving at the apartment house, all four waited outside for Oliveri to exit the building. Upon exiting their apartment house, uh, Bisakia and Olive uh, shot Oliveri, who was left dangling on a tree. <laughs> he was left dangling. What was he climbing out the fucking window? Are you serious? Gravano stated that uh, Bisakia, who was a soldier uh, in Michael Mendaglio's crew, was selected as the shooter because he had balls. Okay, remember how we just talked about the government bringing it up, talking about Ozzy? Remember that? Remember Tom Petruski, the FBI agent, asked him? Let me read Gravano's answer. Well, we debriefed about it. It was one of the homicides that we touched on. As I spoke about this hit, I completely left out Ozzy. I forgot that Ozzy was involved. I forgot to mention it. Sometime later, I received a call from FBI agent Petruski and asked him if Ozzy Stantini knew about the Oliveri hit, and I told him I would get back to him and hung up. Then I immediately remembered at that point that not only he knew, but he was involved in it, and I forgot to say when, 
when I was debriefed by the FBI. But meanwhile, I have a fucking sheet of paper of his debriefing about this murder. There's no murder of Ozzy. His story has changed about who was involved in that murder from 1991 to 1992 to 1996. His whole story changed. Now he's bl- he's blaming Lorenzo Menino. Now he's blaming John Gambino. Now he's blaming Robert Basakia. He's blaming everyone else but Ozzy, but he says in court one thing, but what he originally told the feds is something totally fucking different. And I would also like to bring this up because it's a very, very fucking uh, important thing because down here it says our confidential informant is known as the consular area of the gambino crime family and went along to see that the hit got done properly that is a fucking lie and let me tell you why because this was prior this was the date of the transcript of this sit down 302 is 1991 do you know that uh from 1990 to 1992, Frankie Lacasio was the underboss, or excuse me, the consular area of the Gambino crime family. Did you know that prior to that, from 90, from 90 to 92, there were two men that were consular area of the crime family. First, it was Joe Piney Armoni who ended up going to fucking prison. Because he went to prison, it was given to Frankie Lacasio from 1990 to 1992. So at the time of this, Gravano was not a consular area of the crime family. But yet... He's telling the FBI that he was, but he wasn't. He's inflating. He's inflating. Totally inaccurate information. This investigation, uh, let me read this, 11, 11, 11-1491, undisclosed. This went to uh, Bruce Mao and George Gabriel and Carmine Russo. Dated. Received 11 19 1991. None of these things, none of these things are accurate or truthful. He said in court, Ozzy did it, but yet here in 1991, he's saying something totally different. You cannot tell two completely different stories about the same fucking murder. Facts. Those are fucking facts. Question from the defense. You understood, sir, that it was your obligation to fully advise the authorities of all the crimes that you were involved in prior to the time that you pleaded guilty. Isn't that a fair statement? Yes or no? Gravano. No. He says no. How is that possible that you can say no, that he doesn't understand it was his obligation to tell the truth? Question, did you ever say that before you took the plea of guilty December 5th, 1991, that you told the authorities of all the crimes you had ever been involved in? Did you say that? Yes or no? How about that? Did you say that? Gravano, I probably told them mostly everything. I thought within a short span of November 14th or 13th to December 5th, whatever major things or whatever I could remember, I would talk about. Question. You knew that if you failed to tell the authorities of all the crimes that you were involved in to the best of your ability, you stood the risk of violating this agreement. Isn't that a pretty fair and accurate statement? Yes. As a matter of fact, you've characterized your memory as a person who doesn't need any help remembering any situation or anything that you have done. Is that an accurate statement? Well, I may need help with dates and stuff like that, but yeah, he has such great memory recall on his podcast. Let's talk about his little memory recall question. So you're a person who has on previous occasions said to the state of your memory is so good that you don't need help remembering situations and things like that. Things you have done. And you said that before on the record. Does that sound familiar? Gravano sounds like something I would say. And sir, wasn't until 1992, long after your plea of guilty, you pleaded guilty to orient us December 5th of 1991. It wasn't until sometime in 1992 that you first told us authorities that you had conspired with people to murder Joey Gallo. Isn't that true? Yes or no? Gravano. It was something that happened 20 some odd years ago back in my life. It's something that didn't happen with everything that did happen. The important things were out there. They were being talked about. Right now, there's probably things hidden in my mind that could be sparked by a certain situation or a question. I didn't find that as something that happened, or I did, but it's a memory that I have. It's like reaching back when I was in school. 
if you sat me long enough, long enough, and you tried to spark my memory, probably things you can dig out I wouldn't imagine telling you about or thinking about. Very convenient. Let me ask you this, given the fact that you were obligated by your prior plea agreement as you understood it to give the government full and complete information with all due respect to the crimes that you knew about or that you had participated in, is it not so that it wasn't until July 1992 that you told any government official of a plan that you were aware of amongst the so-called boss of the crime families, as you described them, to kill witnesses in a projected federal case known as the Windows case? July 1992, the first time, the first time you ever bothered to mention that? I believe so. So in other words, he stalls. He stalls. Question, and you kept that from authorities, didn't you? From the period of November 8th to believe when your cooperation started? Yes, I did. So I'm going to stop there. And this is why this is important. Because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. I mean, I have, I have an infinite amount uh, infinite, uh, of... I have an infinity of paperwork on Gravano. How can you debrief in 1991 about the Oliveri murder and blame three other people and not a couple of months later totally blame somebody else? How is that possible? An FBI agent calls him to talk about a murder and he says, well, we think Ozzy did it. And then Gravano suddenly remembers five minutes off the phone. uh, Oh yeah, it was him. He's lying. He's lying. Facts. Like I told you before, this is not about John Gotti being innocent. This is not about John Gotti being a fucking scapegoat for the government. John Gotti did a lot of things he shouldn't have done. And I'm not excusing anything that he did. But the reality of this is, is that Gravano lied. You haven't, we just read you the transcript, didn't you? You signed an agreement and you agreed to do X, Y, and Z. But isn't it true you're lying? Well, yes. I didn't tell them everything. So if you're going to impugn a character based on their value as a uh, federally protected witness, shouldn't those things kind of be brought up? Shouldn't those things have been brought up? But Gleason repeatedly buried information that he had, and he buried it because they did not want their star informant to be impugned because the minute that they can impugn Gravano, Gotti might walk. Move forward a couple of years later, Gravano has widely said he was going to try to help Frankie Loke get out of prison for the murder of DB, which we know from the transcripts, John Gotti is admitting that he called for the murder. There were transcripts where Frankie Loke told him not to do it, tried to talk him out of it. But those tapes suddenly disappeared when Hurricane Sandy hit, and according to the federal government, those tapes got destroyed. Because, you know, they just sit in a basement in New Jersey somewhere because that makes all the fucking sense in the world. But Frankie Loke was trying to get out because of that murder conviction that he had nothing to do with and everybody knows it. And then Gravano, once he starts to arrive on the scene of this stupid podcast, says, well, I'm going to try to help him out. And people asked him, why didn't you go to the FBI in 1991 when they charged him with that murder? You were so hell bent on telling the government the truth about everything, allegedly, Why didn't you bother to tell them, no, Frankie Loke had nothing to do with that? Why do you not do that? Do you want to know what his response to that answer was? Because nobody asked me. So he wants you on one hand to think he tried to do the right thing by Frankie Locasio, who died in fucking prison for a murder he didn't fucking commit. And everybody knows it. But he didn't give a fuck in 91 or 92. But in 2019, he wants to give a fuck then. Do you see where I'm going with this? He knew Frankie Loke didn't commit that murder. He knew Frankie Loke was sitting in prison for a murder he didn't commit. He died in fucking prison because of that conviction. That specific charge buried him. He did nothing to help. Oh, he waits 25 years later and goes, well, nobody bothered to ask me, so I figured why tell him. That's just more concrete evidence and proof to you. Gervano withheld the truth. At every turn, every instance, he refused to tell the truth. He omitted what he wanted to and added to what he wanted. When Anthony Gaspipe Casso started speaking out from prison and started screaming, imagine Gaspipe is screaming from prison. Gravano's a drug dealer. Gravano's a drug dealer. Everything matches what Raybach, the Conti letter, uh, 
uh, Tommy Irish. It matched what Al Diarco. It matched what everybody was fucking saying. And the government knew that they had subverted information, buried it under the rug. And the minute the gas pipe starts, starts to talk about it, they rip up his agreement. Because he was going to make them look like the liars that they fucking are. I don't like gas pipe castle. Fuck them. I don't like any rat. Fuck them. But once again, I tell you the same thing. You should be convicted on the merit of whether they have evidence if you did something, not on the words of a piece of shit. So for all you Gravano lovers who love to flock to his fucking site, why don't you ask him some of the things? Ask him some of the things I've brought up. And these aren't just derivatives that I come up with. Hear that? These paperwork. I've got over fucking 5,000 pages of paperwork on this prick. I've got surveillance photos that would blow your fucking mind. I've got other things that we're going to talk about. And part three of this. And then once I hit the documentary, it's going to get real fucking crazy. Because he's a lying sack of shit. And for anybody that loves Gravano, let me just pose one question to you. Just one. Do you think it's fair that he murdered a fucking 16-year-old kid? Do you think it's fair that I filled out a Freedom of Information Act request to get information on Alan Kaiser and his murder and the government refuses to give me anything? In fact, flatly denied me of any giving me anything? How does it hurt anyone if they give me information on that? Because the information that they have contained is going to make Gravano look like a piece of shit. You would think at this point the government wouldn't give a fuck after Gravano did his plea deal. He lied about everybody, gets gets forgiven for 19 murder conspiracies. They, they only allow him to admit to one fucking murder, which we all know is not true. And he goes out and sells drugs again and gets another 20 fucking years and Joe Arpaio hammers him in prison. Okay. But why are they still protecting him? Why are they still protecting him? It's because the government was negligent. They took the the, the the words of a devil to put John Gotti in prison. And did John Gotti deserve to be in prison? Probably. 100%. I don't think anybody's going to tell you any different. And it's not about making John Gotti a saint or saying he did nothing wrong. How could you do this? That's not what it's about. It's about society continues to allow fucking rats to lie. And they're willing to accept those lies for the bottom line. Now, would they have convicted John Gotti on 25 other things? Absolutely, they would have. I don't think there's any question about that. I think that the, the transcripts speak for themselves. Gotti had a mouth. Okay, it is what it is. But at the same fucking time, I just presented you with 45 minutes to an hour of lie after lie after lie. And this is the government's paperwork. I didn't invent this shit. I didn't get it from Google or a mob chat room. These are actual fucking court documents. These are documents from Gravano's 302s, which I have gotten. And you can see some of them on the smokinggun.com. Go and type in Sammy Gravano. You're going to see all kinds of crazy shit because the government, for some reason, was stupid enough to release it. And it always brings me back to the point. Stop believing in these people. This guy, one minute remembers everything on his show from details of a cock pump. But not a year after he gets arrested, he doesn't remember minute details about the ebb and flow of the streets on day-to-day basis. Are you fucking kidding me? Because it's what we call selective fucking memory. And all of this nonsense he said about John Gotti betrayed me. John Gotti did this. He was setting me up as the fall guy. No, he wasn't. John Gotti realized too late in the fucking game you were a lying sack of snake shit. And he should have fucking killed Gravano. Years prior to that, Gravano never would have been become what he became if Frankie DeChico doesn't get killed. So that's why when people argue with me, oh, we don't think Sammy had anything to do with that. He didn't. Prove me that he didn't. He had everything to gain by being involved in Frankie DeChico getting killed. I have a surveillance photo of after Bobby Borriello got killed and Gotti says, I'm going to go to war with the motherfucking Lucchese crime family because he knew Gaspipe Castle was behind a lot of that shit. He knew it. So ask yourself if that's the case and Gotti says, I get through these trials, we're going to war with the Lucchese's. Fuck them. Why is Gravano caught 
on multiple surveillance photos with Vicamuso and Gaspipe Castle when he knows they're going to go to war with them. What are you going to tell me? Oh, no, he's not conspiring with them. You mean to tell me you don't think Gravano was conspiring to try to kill John Gotti at some point, or he was pushing a narrative to Vicamuso and Gaspipe Castle to line his own goddamn pockets? Tell me otherwise. Yeah, you guys can say, well, that's kind of a leap. It's not. The streets are treacherous. Why is it so hard for you fucking people to believe that Gravano wouldn't stab Gotti in the back? Or Massino, who at one point was going to plan to kill John Gotti. The streets are dangerous. You guys all think this is, and I don't mean all of you, I just mean there's so many people that don't understand the streets. You can be best friends with a guy today, tomorrow he's going to fucking kill you. That's reality. It's politics. It's money. It's business. It doesn't take much to set those wheels in motion. So why is it so hard for some of you to believe that Gravano would have not been involved in that? Do you realize he's not a celebrity? He's a fucking gangster. He's a mobster. This is what they do. This is what people in that life do. They murder. There's because of money, there's selfish, greedy power. Oh, but you guys won't believe any of that. Oh, he would never have had anything to do with Frankie to Chico because I don't have a picture of it means it couldn't have happened. And that's not true. That's why when people argue with me, opinion aside, have whatever fucking opinion you want. But the truth of the matter is you don't understand the streets. You don't get the politics of it. I do. Sorry you hear of my necklace pop. I understand the streets. Been there, done that been around people all my life still am to deal with this you cannot understand how one second a guy can be like you know what he's not such a bad guy wednesday kill him and his fucking kids fuck them that's how the streets are but because people watch goodfellas they watch casino they read a book they wear a fucking t-shirt they order a fucking poster they have no bearing on what the streets are none of them none of them That's just the truth. That's the difference between me and them. And I tell you the truth. So that's where we're going to end off today. We are going to come back next week. We're probably going to do a Gravano's a liar part three. And we'll just take it from there. And I hope you're learning something about this. See, the whole thing about this is I'm not on a crusade to kill Gravano. I could give a fuck less. He's a leopard, a leper. He's a fucking scumbag, a liar, a, a vile piece of shit. Fuck him. Let him get AIDS in the ass and die. I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. I hope he gets cancer in the fucking eyes. Okay? I hope his dick falls off. That's what I think of him and what he's done with his life. But at the end of the fucking day, it's not about defending John Gotti. People are going to listen to this and go, oh, here he is. Defend-. That's not what I'm doing. I'm simply saying convict a motherfucker on the merit of his behavior and evidence of what he did, not on the words of a motherfucker who's getting a free pass. Oh, and Gravano said under oath he didn't sell drugs, and I'm going to read transcripts next week where Gravano talks about his distaste for drugs and how he would never, ever be involved in it. But what's the first thing this motherfucking piece of shit does when he gets away from the government? What does he do in Arizona? He doesn't deal in drugs, doesn't know nothing about the drug business. It's a dirty business. I don't want anything to do with that business. There you have it. So tell me otherwise. Tell me otherwise. If you're so against drugs, so dead set against not getting involved, why is that the first thing you do when you go to Arizona? So who's the liar? We'll see everybody next week on Mob Talk radio.